A lot of times when people try to release a tight psoas, they try to stretch it out or do some sort of self myofascial release. But a lot of times these things don't actually stick or they don't provide relief for more than a couple of minutes. There's one huge key that we can use to understand how we can get long-term relief from a tight psoas. And it's something that a lot of people don't consider. The basics of the psoas is that it attaches on the lumbar spine and also runs down to the lesser trochanter of the femur. So what it does is when it contracts, it can pull the lumbar spine forward into an anterior pelvic tilt and it also creates external rotation of the femur. However, the psoas actually directly innervates the diaphragm itself. Normally when we inhale, the diaphragm contracts and descends within our trunk. If we have a tight psoas or we're stuck in a position of more anterior pelvic tilt, then this can also influence the psoas as well. So we can have the psoas contract and that can pull the lumbar spine forward into extension and the pelvis will come forward with it. And it will also subtly externally rotate the femurs. Now think about how many people, including yourself potentially, have rib flare, meaning these low ribs are poking out right here. And a lot of times that's accompanied by a pelvis that is forward in space. Many people have an anterior pelvic tilt to a certain extent. There are other factors that influence this, which I discuss in other content, but the point is, is if I have a forward pelvis and rib flare, what that represents is a diaphragm that cannot fully ascend within the trunk and within the thorax. But the point is, is that if I have a forward pelvis and some of this rib flare, what that represents is that these low ribs are in a chronic position of inhalation and moved up and away, which means that the diaphragm cannot fully ascend and move into its eccentric position as it should upon exhalation. And because the psoas is directly connected to the position of the diaphragm, that means that unless we can fully exhale and the diaphragm can descend and ascend as it needs to, the psoas can be chronically in this tightened position if we don't address what the diaphragm is capable of doing. This means to get long-term relief of a psoas, we have to learn how to get a full exhale, which as we get that full exhale, that is going to bring that diaphragm up. These ribs are going to come down and this pelvis is going to rotate posteriorly, which can help take stress off of that psoas. Now, this is a big key for me when I first work with someone and also within my beginner body restoration program, because if someone can inhale and exhale fully, that means that their pelvis can anteriorly and posteriorly rotate their ribs can internally and externally rotate which really helps loosen them up and get rid of chronic stiffness otherwise we're just stuck in this position where we have a forward pelvis externally rotated femurs and that psoas is in this tightened position so this is why some people can stretch and pound on that psoas all day long but not see long-term relief because they can't fully exhale there's a couple of different ways we can do this, but the general idea is we want to get the pelvis in a position where it can posteriorly rotate easily and bias a little bit more internal rotation of the femurs, but also get these ribs to come down so the diaphragm can ascend. Now I work with people every day to help improve their breathing and the position of their pelvis and their rib cage and what the diaphragm is capable of doing. A lot of times people don't know what it feels like to get a full exhale. They think they do, but once I watch them do it and I were to retest their measurements, they oftentimes don't see a change because they don't have an idea of what a full exhale really feels like. Therefore, providing some external resistance for them to blow into, like a balloon, can be extremely helpful for getting the diaphragm to ascend. And if that's too much, then they can use something like a straw. And here's how I would coach that. We need to be in this position where we have our mid to low back up against the wall and our knees close to our chest, feet hip width apart. We need to make sure that we are feeling our sit bones at the bottom of our pelvis throughout this entire exercise. That's going to ensure that we're in a good position. And we wanna bring the knees pretty close to the chest about this far. And if you feel like your knees are going outside like this, try to keep them in a little bit. And you could just take the right arm and just hug them a little bit if you want. But if you're able to keep them there passively right here, we're gonna reach with the right arm. And we're gonna hold the balloon in the mouth with the left hand. We're going to exhale through our mouth and get all the air out. And as we do that, we're gonna feel ourselves peel off the wall and flex more. And we're gonna feel our abs engage, particularly on the side at the end of that exhale. We're going to hold that, put the tongue on the roof of the mouth at the end of the exhale. And we're gonna keep the tongue on the roof of the mouth as we inhale. And then we're going to exhale again, keeping that right arm reach. Now the goal is to maximize the pause, the amount of time between the exhale and the inhale with the tongue on the roof of the mouth before you have to inhale again. 
You don't want to go to the point where you're stressed, but you want to do how comfortably can we go before we feel like we have to inhale again. It's going to maximize the amount of expansion you get in your back rib cage. And we're going to do this for three breaths or potentially five breaths, but probably three. And then we're going to let the air out of the balloon at the end of the last inhale. And then we're going to go again. The biggest mistake on this is that people are going to shrug their shoulders into their ears, either with the hand that they're holding it in or with the arm that they're reaching with. So make sure that you're not doing this. Your traps are nice and relaxed, but you're still getting that reach. The other thing is that people are going to be too close or too far away from the wall and they're not going to be feeling their sit bones. So Trevor can demonstrate what it looks like if you're too close and then you're going to be kind of extended and you're going to feel like you're not able to peel off the wall effectively or they're going to be too far away and they're going to be slouched like that. So make sure you're feeling your sit bones, your mid to low back is in contact with the wall, but your upper back will be peeling off. If you're struggling with the balloon, you could use a straw and you can do the same exact thing. So you can hold it there, you can reach with the right arm and then you can just get a full, full exhale. So that's a little less external load or resistance as you can think of it. And that will still cue you to get a full exhale. An alternative position you can do this in is in a sideline position with about a 90 degree angle at both your knees and your hips and making sure that your shoulder is stacked over your hips. You're not rolled too far back or too far forward. You're right, nice and even right there. And you can do the same exact thing. I would also recommend that you have some support underneath your head to allow your cervical spine to be neutral so you're not cranked here or too much support and you're here nice and neutral and then do the same exact thing. Exhale through the mouth fully. You're gonna feel your side abs engage. Pause, tongue on the roof of the mouth, extend that pause for as long as you're comfortable. Keep the tongue on the roof of the mouth as you inhale through your nose, and then exhale again as you take the tongue off. After they master that in either the short seated or the sideline position, we can move on to something like this. This is the wall supported reach with passive internal rotation from Postural Restoration Institute. To set up for this, we need a ball that's going to keep our knees in line with our toes in a standing position. And then we're going to get about one foot length away from the wall, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is place the ball between the knees. And now here's the key. We need to get our feet outside of our knees. So the amount is gonna vary depending on the individual, but basically you wanna get your knees slightly going in and then you're going to put a little squeeze on that ball. If you feel any crampiness on the outside of your hips as you do that, then you know your feet are too far outside your knees and I would adjust that move in a little bit more. But the key is, is you want to feel your weight in your heels. And we have something set up here so that gives him an object to reach for. But what he's gonna do is he's gonna squeeze that ball. The amount's gonna vary depending on the individual. Could be a two to about a seven out of 10. And we'll cue you as to what that should be. But generally around the two to four out of 10 is where you wanna be here. And then you wanna keep your low back flat on the wall. Pelvis comes off, upper back is off. And exhale through your mouth like you're sighing air out. And what you're gonna do is just finish that exhale until you feel your side abs engage. You're gonna maintain that side ab tension and you're gonna inhale through your nose and you're gonna keep reaching. There you go. And you're gonna exhale through the mouth again. You might wanna reach just very, very subtly further or you can just maintain that reach, but that object is just there to cue you to maintain that reach. You don't have to use something like this. It's just helpful for beginners. And then you're gonna go through breaths of that. Exhale all the air out as if you're sighing because it's like your mouth is a faucet. The more open your mouth is, the more air you can get out. And then maintain that, that tension in your abs. Inhale through the nose. Feel all this back open up. So to summarize, what you should feel is your feet outside of your knees. You should feel a little squeeze on that ball. Just your low back is up against the wall and your weight is in your heels. And you're just gonna take breaths in that position. The most common mistake in this activity is people are going to stand up as they inhale. So this is by far what is going to happen the most because people are going to not want to expand their back rib cage. So you gotta maintain that reach and you gotta make sure that you are maintaining it during the full inhale. That's gonna give you that sensation of the space between your shoulder blades and spine opening up. The other thing is that people come too far onto their toes. They forget that they're supposed to feel their heels because they're trying to open up the back and push our center mass back onto our heels. They forget about that, they go on their toes. So make sure that your whole foot is flat, but the weight is mostly in the heels. If you're having a hard time maintaining a full exhale, what you can do is hold a balloon in your left hand and then you can just reach with the right arm. Everything is still the same. Exhale all that air out and then put your tongue on the roof of your mouth to prevent air backflow out of that balloon. 
Maintain the tongue on the roof of the mouth as you inhale through your nose. Exhale, boom, and blow up that as much as you can. If you're doing this with a balloon, I recommend you do it for about five sets of three full breath cycles. That way the balloon doesn't blow up on you. If you're using a straw, I'd recommend three sets of five full long breath cycles.